Hi, the two most common exceptions that we get when working with uh, HTTPS URLs are PKIX and SSL handshake exception. Now, PKIX means that we do not have the root certificate in our trusted chain. And the SSL handshake exception basically happens when we do not provide the client and key pair, which could be a separate client and key file or P12 or a PFX PKCS12 store. Now, what I have noticed is that sometimes we waste a lot of time trying to connect using code in Java, but the root cause turns out to be a certificate issue. So in this video, I'm going to cover what is a binary cert base 64 encoded cert and how to actually create a certificate chain using root and intermediate cert and then we will use curl and postman to verify that all of that works so it's not about just using curl or postman but to understand why do we get this error and then how to resolve it the first thing we will cover is pkix exception which means that we are trying to connect to a URL and it uses a SSL certificate which has been certified by an authority that we do not have in our certificate store or our trusted chain. So let's go to badssl.com. Say go to the untrusted route. Say proceed. So here we can see it's saying not secure certificate is not valid and in certificate part there is only one root certificate authority in another case which we'll cover next we will have a root authority and an intermediate cert and then the website cert so we don't really have to work with the website cert uh, which is like binded to the url that we are using we are more interested in the root authority because if you have the root authority and in some cases, the intermediate authority, you are good to go. There is no need for website cert. And that way, when the website cert actually expires in a year or two years time, uh, you don't have to worry about it. The website will renew the certificate. But since the root authority will stay the same, uh, your connection will continue to work. Because normally, let's see the website certificate. Uh, it will expire in 24 but the root authority certificate it will expire in 36 so if you have this you're good to go till 2036 so now let's go to details and then click on copy to file so we'll start with der encoded binary certificate i'll save it in downloads bad ssl i'll call it one root binary certificate okay now we'll leave this as is so now i'll go to downloads bad ssl and this is the certificate that i exported open with notepad plus plus you can use any editor you like here you can see this is binary format as you can see there's a lot of uh, funny characters here but you can read a bit of text here and there let's go back do copy file again this time we will do a base 64 encoded now see this is binary and when we base 64 encode any binary data it looks like plain text so now let's do this i'll call it two underscore root encoded okay finish okay okay so now if I open this one, you will see it's basically text. Now this format is also known as PEM format or a PEM file, even though it's saying .cer, it's actually a PEM file. And let's say you received this certificate, a binary root cert. So you can actually convert this into a PEM file using this command. 
OpenSSL, we will pass in the file name and we will get the PIM file. Now, let's do that. I'm in the downloads bad SSL folder. We will say open SSL x509 in form is dir or binary encoded. The input file is root binary and the output file is, I'll call it root pem dot pem. PRM, I'll just rename it to pem. Okay. So now, if you check this, you will see that the encoded file and the pem file, they both have same file size. Let's open the PIM file. You see, they both look the same. We can do this, compare. You see, the third and the second, they match. And that is what I was explaining, where even though the extension is .cer, but this certificate actually contains encoded data, which is what you will see in a PIM file. So now the last concept here is creating a certificate chain. So what this means is, let's go to bad SSL, let's go to client, and let's look at the certificate chain here. So you see over here, this is the website certificate, which is valid for another three months. And we go to intermediate certificate. This is valid till 25. And then the root one, which is valid till 35. So see in this case, this is the root certificate. This is the intermediate certificate. And we need both of them, but not the website certificate. So let's do this, we'll view it. And we will copy to file. We will get it in PIM format. And I'll share why now. So we'll call it one underscore client, the URL is client, so client underscore intermediate certificate. And then we will go to the root view certificate, copy to file. We need it encoded. Say two underscore client underscore root cert. Finish. Okay. So now the concept of certificate chain is basically this the same thing that we saw here. We have two certificates, root and intermediate, and we need both of them to create a certificate chain. Now in the previous example, there was only there was only one. So that was straightforward where we just need this. But in this case, because there are two, we need to combine them and to create a certificate chain. We start with the intermediate certificate. So the top one will be the intermediate certificate. So I'll take it, copy, new file, paste, and then I'll take the root certificate, copy, paste. So now this is basically known as a certificate chain. I'll just call it three client. Chain. So now we have worked with all these concepts and we will start implementing them or using them. So let's look at the first one which is the PKIX exception using Postman. So I'll copy this and open Postman. Okay, just make sure in settings, the SSL verification is enabled. Okay, so we get the self-signed certificate error here. Because if this verification is disabled, then it will go through. So we enable it. Okay. So now let's add. So this is the first site where we only had one 
This is this one where we have just one root cert. There's no intermediate cert. So as it says, you can see it says PIM format, that's fine. So we will use, you can either use the encoded one. Let's start with that. So we do that and send it works. You can even use the PIM file that we created using open SSL. So if I do this PIM file, send, it works. So now for the next concept, which is the SSL handshake exception. Now this thing requires a key and a cert or a P12. So let's start with key and cert. So this website is https client.padssl.com. Let's give it its certificate chain. So over here, there were root and intermediate certificate present. So we will use the certificate chain over here. Okay, let's try it now. So it gives us an error because we still need to set the key and the cert. Okay, so we'll add certificate. The host is client.ssl.com. Certificate file is this, and the key file is this. The password is badssl.com. Let's try it. Okay, it works. The status is 200. Now let's remove that. Okay. Let's try again. So we'll get 400 again. Okay, bad request. Now let's do the same thing with the P12. So you will see over here, it is asking for a PFX. Now, P12 and PFX, they both follow PKCS12. So you can actually just give it a P12 password and try it. Let's see. This works. So now we are done with Postman. Okay, so we did this. So yeah, please like and subscribe if you uh, if you have enjoyed so far. Okay, so now moving on to PKIS exception using curl. So we'll do the same thing. Let's open this website using curl. Okay, so curl and then paste. So we get the certificate problem. So in Postman, we have here that we said enables SSL verification and you can enable it and it will verify if it is disabled, then it won't verify the certificate chain. Same way we can actually say curl hyphen hyphen insecure paste. See, when I said insecure, it worked. It basically, it's like switching off this verification, but in curl, it's by using hyphen hyphen insecure. Okay, so let's remove this. Instead, let's pass in the CA cert. So this one, we need the PEM file. So we can do the root PEM file. See, it works. We can also, instead of the root one, we can pass the second one, which is the root encoded one. And it works. Now, if we give it the binary one, then it gives the error because it needs it in PIM format. So now let's do the SSL handshake exception using curl. So over here we will say hyphen hyphen ca cert is now the 
client chain uh, because now we will connect to this site which has two and so that's why we created a client chain for this where the cert is let's do the client.pem and key is client.key and the password is bad ssl.com and the url is line.bad ssl.com so it works if i run it without the cert and the key obviously will say get an error now in order to use it with the, the p12 I have to delete the key and replace this with the bad SSL, basically this file, the P12. The password is same, bad SSL. The key is inside the P12, so I don't have to give it separately. Um, so the error that it is giving me is, I did not mention the cert hyphen type, which is P12. And it works. So hope this helped. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.